Hey, welcome to the Electron X Lab. In this video, I'm going to talk about Thevenin's theorem. Go through a little bit of the theory behind it and the application of it in, in electrical circuits. Now, Thevenin's theorem was derived in like 1883 by, let's try, try my, fr my French pronunciation, Léon Charles Thévenin. I don't know, judge me on that if you want. Um, but it was also derived independently by Herbert von Helmholtz about 30 years earlier, at least according to, to Wikipedia. Now, I don't know why the naming for it was given to Thevenin and not Helmholtz, but the Wikipedia entry for Thevenin says he was a pretty good dude, so maybe the naming committee decided that the name should go to him. Anyway, Thevenin's theorem states that any linear bilateral electric network can be reduced to a simpler network consisting of a voltage source, a single voltage source in series with a, a resistor. Now, a couple of terms that may not be super familiar there, a linear network and a bilateral network. Now, a linear network is any network made up of, of linear devices. And, and if we're talking about DC circuits, which we are right now, the only three, um, the only three components that we need to care about are resistors, voltage sources, and current sources. As far as bilateral network goes, that just means that the, the circuit or the components in the circuit have the property or operate such that it doesn't matter what the polarity of the voltage across it is, the magnitude of the current through it is going to be the same. So basically, if I have a resistor and I apply 5 volts across it, and let's say it's a 1 ohm resistor, the magnitude of the current, the current's going to be going that way, the magnitude of the current is 5 amps. Now, if I have the exact same resistor and I just change the polarity of the voltage, the current, the magnitude of the current's the same, just the direction's different. So that's what a bilateral circuit is. So the basic idea behind Thevenin's theorem is you can have a circuit, and this again, linear bilateral circuit, so it can have resistors, it can have voltage sources, it can have current sources, in a really complicated configuration. Or a really simple configuration, any configuration really. And we've got the two connections to it there. That circuit can be converted into a simple circuit that looks like that. It has a voltage source and it has a series resistor. And those two points are the same. Now, the real power of the Thevenin equivalent is I can have this really complicated circuit, reduce it down to something like this, and then let's say I wanted to know what the voltage and current across the load is. Now, if I have a load that's one kilo ohm, and I figure out that voltage and current, and then all of a sudden that load changes to something, say it changes to 100 ohms, I don't have to do much in terms of reevaluation. This is a very simple circuit to figure to, to analyze to figure out what voltage and what current you have for, for this load. Whereas this circuit over here may be some really complicated arrangement of resistors and multiple voltage sources, multiple current sources. If I change the load on this circuit without without doing the seven and equivalent, it could be a really complicated an analysis to figure out what the new voltage and current are if I if I change the load. But with the seven and equivalent, very simple calculation with this basically a voltage divider network. So now I'm going to talk about how to thevenize a circuit. Uh, I'll give you a description of how to do it, and then I'll go through an example. So, so number one is analyze or determine the port that you want to thevenize. Number two is remove the load resistor there. That's not part of the, the part of, that's not part of the circuit that you want to thevenize. And then label the label that point that you've removed. So you've got an A and B point, and that's going to be kind of the, the part of the circuit, the port of the circuit, looking in, looking into the circuit to figure out you're going to figure out a voltage and you're going to figure out a, a resistance. Number three is figure out the Thevenin equivalent resistance. And to do this, you will zero all the sources. So that means set any voltage source to a short and then set any current source to an open. So effectively, zero voltage, zero current. 
then calculate the resistance seen looking into that point between the points A and B. The next step is to figure out the voltage at the port, figure out the voltage between the points A and B. Now you've calculated a resistance and you've calculated a voltage. Those two values that you've calculated are the Thevenin equivalent. So now you have a Thevenin equivalent voltage and a Thevenin, Thevenin equivalent resistance that gives you the Thevenin equivalent. Here is an example circuit that I'm going to use to demonstrate how to thevenize a circuit. And what we want to do is figure out the voltage across and the current through this 20 ohm resistor. So to do that, what we're going to do is thevenize this whole half of the circuit. And remember, to do the thev thevenization, to, to create the thevenin equivalent for that circuit, there's a number of steps we have to go through. First of all is just to identify the part of the circuit that you want to thevenize. And so since this 20 ohm resistor right here is our load, we want to thevenize everything to the left of it. And so we can remove this 20 ohm load. Well, actually, we'll put it back in, don't worry, when we do the evaluation at the end to figure out the voltage across and the current through it. So this is what we want to thevenize. We can label these two points just so that we can keep track of them. If there were a number of steps for simplification, this would be, this would be pretty important. This circuit is going to be fairly simple to thevenize, so not super critical to have those A and B points there because we can keep track of them pretty easily. Then the third step is to figure out the Thevenin equivalent resistance. And the way that we do that is set all the sources to zero. So when we set a voltage source to zero, we make it a short. And now that we've set the source to zero, we can figure out what is the Thevenin resistance seen looking into the circuit. So what what would I get if I put an ohm meter between A and B there? Well, that's a fairly simple evaluation. We have a 50 ohm resistor in series with this parallel combination of the 100 ohm and the 50 ohm resistor there. So the resistance between A and B is 50 ohms plus 50 in parallel with 100. And this works out to 50 ohms plus this, this little that, that parallel combination, 1 over 50 plus 1 over 100, and then the inverse of that is 33.3. So RAB is 83.3 ohms. And this is also, I mean, that, that resistance between A and B, that is the Thevenin resistance. That's the resistance that we're trying to figure out. The fourth step is to figure out the Thevenin voltage. And that's going to be, that's the voltage, the open source, open circuit voltage between A and B when the source is put back in. When all the sources, in this case, we only have the one. So I put back this 100 volt source and figure out what is the voltage between A and B. Well, you can imagine if I put a voltmeter there, that 50 ohm resistor is actually not gonna play any part in, in the voltage that's created or the voltage that is between A and B there. So what, what I have here is, is really, it's just the voltage across that 50 ohm resistor. So then it's just a voltage divider network. It will be some fraction of that 100 volts, the fraction of the 100 volts across the 50 ohms. So the voltage divider equation will be that 50 volts divided by 50 plus 100. So that's going to be a third of the voltage. So a third of 100 volts, 33.3 volts. So the VAB is the Thevenin voltage. And now that I've got the Thevenin voltage and the Thevenin resistance, I've, I've Thevenized the circuit. My new circuit, I can redraw it. Via 33.3 volts and 83.3 ohms. So that's the Thevenin equivalent of that circuit. Now going back to the beginning, remember I had this 20 ohm resistor here and it was really, I wanted to figure out what the voltage across it and what the current through it is. 
well, I can throw that 20 ohm resistor back into the circuit because this part of the circuit is the Thevenin equivalent of this circuit. So if I put this 20 ohm load here, it's the same, same evaluation. The same, I get the same value here as if I did the calculation to figure out what's going on in the circuit there. So let's figure out the uh, voltage across that load. So that's the, v, the VL here. Well, again, it's a voltage divider. So some fraction of that 33.3 volts. And that works out to 6.45 volts. And the current through the load, so that's the IL here, that's going to be that 6.45 volts divided by the resistance. 6.45 over 20, 0.32 amps. All right. Well, to see the power of, the, of creating a Thevenin equivalent, let's look at what happens if I change the resistor. Now, if I change this 20 ohm resistor to a 50 ohm resistor, well, if I do it over here, there's a little bit more calculation that I would have to do. But if I do it here, it's just going to be another simple voltage divider network. If, if my circuit here was much more complicated, you could see that it would be a lot more work to figure out what the voltage across and the current through it's going to be compared to, to this calculation on the Thevenin equivalent. So the Thevenin equivalent can, can make it much easier to recalculate your load conditions um, if, if you do have to change the load. So if I change that load resistor from 20 ohms to 50 ohms, it's really just a matter of putting 50, recalculating with 50 in this voltage divider equation here. So this will change that voltage to 12.5 volts. And then I'll have 12.5 volts over 50 ohms. And that gives me a current of 0 0.25 amps. So very quick to, to make a change to, to recalculate the voltage across and the current through that load if I change the, the load resistor. So hopefully that gives you some good insight in how to Thevenize a circuit and the usefulness of, uh, the of creating the Thevenin equivalent. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. I don't know. I guess that's it. Can you even see me? behind all of this writing. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Boom. Three cheers for Leon Thévenin. Hip hip hooray. Hip hip hooray. Hip hip hooray. <laughs> I'm going to have to cut that. Um.